I'm Grace McDonald and welcome to the first episode of the Antelope News for Fall 2020. As you can tell from my mask, we are filming this during the 2020 COVID pandemic. According to the UNK Public Health Center, as of September 7th, there are currently 15 active COVID illnesses being tracked on campus. These cases consist of 12 UNK students and three employees. These numbers are trending down from their last report from August 31st, which had 23 tracked cases, 21 students and two employees. Cases in Buffalo County are up between these two dates and reports for the state of Nebraska are down. The Public Health Center encourages anyone having COVID-19 symptoms or believing they need a test to contact them by calling 308-865-8279 or email them at unkhealth at unk.edu. In yet another shakeup of routine, the upcoming spring semester is going to be different in 2021. The college will hold an optional three-week intercession from January 4th through the 22nd, when students can take online courses. This schedule is similar to what is known as a J-term at some colleges and high schools. The full spring semester is then delayed until January 25th, with finals ending May 6th. Commencement will be held May 7th. While those who opt out of the January intercession will get a longer winter break, the condensed spring schedule means that there will be no spring break next year. We talked to students to get their reactions to the new academic calendar. I just feel like once you come back, you're not going to want to do that optional class because like you're, we're already getting pushed so hard right now. Like I'm a freshman and I already know that I have so much going on with my classes. Personally, I'm not planning on taking any classes since I just recently heard about it. I don't really have any hopes or plans to. And uh, I kind of feel like this is just an extended winter break. I'm going to try and travel during the uh, that three week, week term or whatever, so it's, it's not going to stop anything. I'm sad. I, I was looking forward to having a spring break. Yeah. Now, like, we usually would like to have that. Students may be asked to social distance, but that doesn't mean UNK can't still put on fun activities. Cassie Brown tells us about the very first and hopefully last Loper Distancing Days held August 28th through the 30th. Loper Distancing Days was kicked off on Friday with Glow Yoga, where students donned glow sticks to light up the night. Some people hear yoga and they're like, I can't do it, my foot doesn't go behind my head. Anybody can do it, you just have to have a flexible mind. The night was cut short, however, by the unexpected spray of the lawn sprinklers. But there was another yoga session in the morning that made up for the previous night's interruption. On Saturday from 1 to 3, students spent the day in the sun paddleboarding at Yanni Park. Frisbee golf also took place on Saturday afternoon. That evening, the UNK residence halls participated in the sidewalk chalk competition. Since everything's kind of travel themed too, we did like a volcano, okay. we have like a tiki guy, and we have dolphins and flowers and like everything Hawaiian. I think it'll be like really good since it's so colorful and like you have to look at it when you walk by it. Some students used Loper Distancing Days activities as an opportunity to meet new people and make connections. They're definitely fun because then you know you get to meet more of your four and at first, I thought all these people were weird, but they're really cool, so. <laughs> Sunday evening was also filled with fun activities. I'm on Foster Field here at UNK as students are wrapping up this eventful weekend with Rec Round Campus, the final activity of Loper Distancing Days. As you can see here, some students are enjoying a game of spike ball, others playing cornhole at the fountain and can jam over at the bell tower. Thanks, Cassie. What a fun way to spend one of the last nice weekends before we get into fall weather. The annual student organization fair was held last Wednesday in the area surrounding the new Cope Fountain. The event is described as a one-stop shop for students looking to get involved on campus, as well as a recruitment tool for UNK's various organizations. Forty campus groups were present promoting their organizations, down slightly from previous years. UNK's Associate Director of Student Engagement, Tim Danube, felt that despite COVID, it was important for the event to occur. There's a, there's a lot of information in student involvement theory 
where it shows that students that are that are involved outside of the classroom uh, when they when they complete their college career uh, on a whole say that they have had a higher uh, satisfaction of their college experience uh, they graduate at a higher rate and they also have higher GPAs. Several safety measures were implemented to protect against possible spread of the virus. Masks were required, the distance between tables was increased, and physical contact was discouraged. Reed Bednar, a student senator for the College of Education, said that the event had a great turnout despite his initial concerns. I think that's a, that's a worry right now in the fall is getting students to go to things, being outside um, obviously helps a little bit to a degree, uh, but that's kind of a key opportunity to get people involved in student orgs because other than that, they have to know when they're meeting, find them on social media. That can be a little bit difficult to do. The organization fair planned by student engagement is the second of two fairs held each fall. The first being the Blue and Gold Showcase. While the university can offer guidelines for on-campus organizations and events, one thing they cannot combat is socializing off-campus. Shown here is recent footage of college-age students at a local drinking establishment clearly not following mask or distancing guidelines. Braden Willis, an employee of Savage Rootless, the self-described lifestyle brand that hosted the party, spoke to Abby McKeague about how even a global pandemic can't stop young people from going out. With students on campus being told not to go out to parties in order to stop the spread of COVID-19, how do you guys feel knowing that the vast majority of the people attending this event are going to be college students? Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, they're always going to go out. Um, and I, honestly, like, in Kearney, Nebraska, like, it's not like, yeah, we're being told to stay in. And, but college kids aren't. We're not going to. Last weekend showed that. Like, this weekend we'll show it. Precautions against COVID-19 have forced all of us to change our daily schedules. This includes the UNK music faculty, who are used to working closely with students one-on-one. -on -one. Antelope News' Ji Yoon Kim interviewed Dr. Ting Lang Chin about how she and other music professors have adapted by moving these lessons outdoors. I never had outdoor lesson at UNK before because I usually conduct lessons in my office. But then we have COVID, right? And in our building, um, my office and also Dr. Elmer's office are the smallest. And I really cannot stay six feet apart from my students. And I have some concern, even though if we wear masks and uh, facilities, very nice to build a shield in my office, but it's still not 100%. So I thought that if weather permits, I want to try to be outdoors because I just feel it's a safer place for all parties involved. The first student, um, that was Monday, nine o'clock, and she did mention that it's quite nice to, to have this learning environment <laughs> under <laughs> And we're so close to nature, and then this seems quite nice. Maybe there's some advantage that is, you know, a lot of music is inspired by nature, or let's say human comes from nature, isn't it? <laughs> right, and then so you are back to where we are from. Maybe it's a better connection to some kind of, I don't know, our heart or emotion or expression. It, it's, it's organic. It's not artificial, like when we are inside a man-made structure. As we close our first episode, we wanted to give a shout out to our new video production studio, in which we are currently filming. This space provides media and communication students the opportunity to work in a professional setting with advanced equipment. Some key features include a news desk, video switcher, lighting grid, switchable backgrounds, sound deadening panels, and wall-mounted screens. UNK's Department of Communication began the planning stages for the production studio back in 2016. Construction began in the fall of 2019 and was completed in March of 2020. Jacob Rosdale, a video production and journalism professor at UNK, says he's excited the studio is now ready to host student productions. 
The production studio is here in the Mitchell Center. This is something we've, we've been working on uh, for years and we're finally able to start it in the fall here with student productions like Antelope News, which people are probably watching right now. But I also want students to come up with uh, entertainment, variety shows, sports shows, all sorts of different types of programming that we can put on our YouTube page and really develop a brand that people will associate with Antelope Student Media. Thank you for watching our first episode of the Antelope News. We hope you'll be back next time for more campus news. I'm Grace McDonald.